<laughs> yeah, no, but that's all right. All Amen. right. Amen. Yep. Shall we? Shall we? Shall we? Well, shall, we, shall, we? Shall, <laughs> we shall. shall? Shall we? Amen. Doctor? Doctor? Yes, doctor. Doctor? 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 doctor. doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome once again to Gospelicious Radio. Uh, I am your host, Adam Miner. With me, as always, is... My friend, my brother, Amen. my pastor, the Reverend Timothy R. Howard Jr. How Amen. are you, sir? Oh, I do good. I do good. You know what I mean? And with me is my brother in Christ, Adam Minor. I'm going to mm. give him a round of applause oh. as well. Oh. Yes, yes. Oh. Elder Adam Minor. I, you I know, wasn't absolutely. fishing for that at all. I know, I know, I know. But I like to I like to spread the applause around. You oh. know what I mean? That's right. Because you, oh. you deserve it, brother. You Thank deserve you. It. Always, always, always. So, so yeah, this is this is episode sixty, guys. Mm. How how are you feeling? Uh, you know, normally sixty episodes weekly would only take about a year and change. Yeah, uh, but it's taken us uh, almost four to get there. <laughs> uh, That's all right. How, yeah. how are you feeling? Sixty feeling episodes good. in, I'm feeling good, feeling good. How are you feeling? I'm glad we're our back. Third one back in the new era. I, I I we've dealt with some pretty good topics so far. Last week was really really good. Yeah, I, I listened to it. I listened to it a couple times because. I just want to make sure what I said was right, but uh, you know, but uh, but number two, it was uh, it was a good it was a good discussion. It yeah, was a good, it was good, really good. It sure. was really good. Yeah. I feel like we could do that one again with more mm. with more word too. Definitely other ones. I mean, as we were going through, it's like, well, you know, I mean, we ended up defining other other things yeah. as we were going because we were using some of that Christianese theo- <laughs> theologue language. The- you know what I mean? Theologian. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if, yeah we're we're talking about episode fifty nine, last week's episode where we defined. Uh, ten dollar theology words. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a good. Th- that was a good episode. Good. Yeah, it was a good time. I, I thought that uh, you know we uh, we talked about some stuff that may f- you know if we're not careful, kind of like people who are maybe kind of new to the faith or just kind of like what does that mean? Right. And I think it was cool to maybe explain some of those words, like you know, right, like exegesis and you know uh, whatever apostate and all yeah. these other things. Well, that's the thing. It's like, you know, I mean, so much of this, it, it is. And especially if you're in a more, I, I think, theologically rich church, which we should we should aim to be, okay? I'm not saying that you walk around with, you know, ivory tower theologian attitude or anything like that, like we talked about before. You can get into a church where, um, and I've been a part of those churches before, where it's like, unless you unless you already know the, the theological lingo, that you're a second class is we don't want to get there. We right. want to get to the point where it's like, yeah, you understand this stuff, and you also feel at liberty to ask questions. And that's mm. really what that whole pod was all about. Is like, yeah, you know, yeah. Not, not everyone has a you know bookshelf made of rich mahogany. I know, with, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, spur, volumes of Spurgeon and the rich and mahogany. The, you know what I mean? <laughs> Mine are like pine, pine. particle board, rich, <laughs> rich, <laughs> rich, rich Home Depot particle board. <laughs> Rich particle board, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that smell of rich mm, particle board in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> that IKEA mm-hmm. plywood yes. smell. Yes, mm. that's the good stuff, man. <laughs> As I look literally across I the know, room at these like, bookshelves, at these bookshelves over here, it's like, yeah, it's, I think this is fine. You know, I'm, uh, I'm sitting next to a bookshelf, mm-hmm. and the first book that I look yeah, at is says. A concise Hebrew and Aramaic lexicon of the <laughs> Old Testament. Oh man, that is a that's some deep uh, deep waters that's, there. That's yeah. uh, that's some light reading right yeah, there. You know, nah. that's good stuff. And then literally, I think a book that is just all Hebrew. Oh yeah, that's I uh, don't even understand it. That is the uh, uh, Biblic uh, um, Hebra- Hebraic Hebraic uh, Stuart tense. I'm reading yeah. it upside down. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what there I thought go. it was. Yeah. Yeah. Stuttgartensia. Yeah. Stuttgartensia, which is Stuttgartensia. a. Uh, it's that is the um, that is the Masoretic uh, traditional underlying uh, Hebrew score for the uh, for the Old Testament. So oh, that's wow. that's what that's what you that's your standard okay. if you study Hebrew. Yep. And like we talked about last yep. week, I see Hebrew for dummies. 
It was mm-hmm. literally right here behind I me. I know. I forgot time. that it was right there. I know. Yeah. It was you right know? next to me. I could yeah. literally reached over and grabbed it. I know. Actually, that's not a bad. That's actually not a bad uh, little little study. It, it was helpful. I bought that years ago when I was actually studying, you know, uh, yeah. Hebrew when I was in Bible college, and it was very helpful. It was very helpful. Yeah. You know. But anyway. Well, yeah. we, we encourage you guys to go back if you haven't seen or listened to episode fifty nine yet. Very helpful and very cool reminder, I think, for us too, as we kind of have. You know, grown over the years and developed our knowledge and have kind of used these words from time to time. It's kind of cool to go back and understand them more and to uh, understand how they're used and mm. and why we say those things and, and, and kind mm. of learn the meaning behind them again. Right. I think it was kind of cool to go back. It was for me. I can't oh, speak yeah. for you. But, no, it was. It was um, awesome. And well, but, I mean, I think also just defining these things because so often, like you say, we just take for granted that people know what we're talking about. And, right, and I right. and I think you I never want to assume. And also thinking through them, like uh, like I think the one that stuck out to me was was the the whole reprobation thing. Um, yeah, a word and, that's used but not necessarily agreed upon. Right. You know. And there are differing viewpoints on it. And unless you, I mean, really, depending upon how you define that term, um, it could mean a whole lot of different things that you don't mean. And so, like, I mean, I you know, yeah, I don't want to go down that path again. But sure. I. I, um, Watch last week's episode. Yeah, if you want to get my thoughts on it. But I just I thought that was really helpful in terms of thinking through it. But anyway, yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of going back, uh, I'll get through the plugs and then we'll move on to oh, what yeah. we're gonna actually going to talk about today. Um, you can find us on YouTube and Sar- uh, Sar- Sarmenardio. Sharman. Sar- <laughs> no. I'm going to try that again. Uh, <laughs> find us on YouTube and then also on Sermon Audio. Sermon Audio. Sermon Audio. Um, and also uh, in there, in the description, um, you'll you'll find a link to our link tree. Uh, this is something we just established this week. Uh, so go to our link tree; it's in the description, um, and you can connect with all, everything that we have there. Yep, it'll send you to all our socials, uh, a link to our email, email. Yep. Um, all that stuff. Go to our link tree and find all of our links there. Um, and so you know, we're, we're talking about going. You know, we were going back to last week but and then talking about kind of going back to kind of our roots as far as where we get these words from you know yeah um there's also uh when, when it comes to our podcast um i was kind of thinking about the history and the genesis of it oh, yeah. uh, no pun intended genesis <laughs> but, uh you know we started in january 2019 our first episode was kind of an intro but we also did something called um the state of theology mm. and so today i kind of wanted to flash back a little bit to that but then also kind of revisit the state of theology right um it's something we also this is episode 60 again but we revisited the state of theology in episode 56, which was only what four episodes, <laughs> four episodes ago. But that was the, also the thing about years that. Ago. The thing about that is that four episodes ago was also three years ago. So yeah, and they've updated the state of theology as we're going to see. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean, quite a bit. And yeah. the, re- <laughs> the result may the shock res- you. Yes, I think that they will <laughs> shock you in many ways. Yeah. Yes, the results. You know, I'll they say may this: shock you. The results shocked us then. Yes. In 2019, they shocked us again in 2020, because I think in 19 we were using results from 18. Yeah. 20 we were revi- or we were going over brand new results. Right. From that 2020, year. Right. That year. And so I thought it'd be cool, or maybe kind of depressing, to go back, <laughs> go back and check out the state of theology again. Now, when I say the state of theology, if you haven't watched these last two episodes, you may be wondering, Hey, Adam, what in the world is that? Hey, Adam. What in the world is that? Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Uh, the State of Theology is a research, I guess it's you could call it a research project, a mm-hmm. research, it's an ongoing research yeah. project that's updated every year, mm-hmm. excuse me, um, and it's put up by Ligonier Ministries, um, and it basically surveys uh, adults, churches, um, all around the country. Right at different times about what they believe to be true uh, about theology. And those results are compiled into this, which is called the state of theology. It's literally the website is the state of theology.com. Yep. You can find all these results here. We've been looking at these pretty, yeah. um, pretty consistently over the right. past few years, right. just kind of keeping up on what the trends are as far as just 
modern day evangelicals what do they believe right and that's and that's i mean like theology of course i mean defining our terms you know i mean Mm, being the study of god like what we believe about god and what the state of that is what the current uh, like you say, opinions are on a variety of different things. A, a lot of a lot of s- simplistic things. Mm. Um, you know, just you know, I mean, as you're going to tell, like, what do you believe about God? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know yeah. who he is. I mean, and and then not just that, but also social issues that are also related to right. our theology and and our relationship with God. Um, and like you say, I mean, uh, you know, the you know, giving us you know a lot of these. Um, you know, surveys and stuff like that have gone out. I mean, I'm reading here uh, that they that they also partnered with uh, with Lifeway as well um, okay, to so be able Lifeway. to do that. Yeah, so they've done it, and I'm sure that they've done with Barna as well. I'm sure at some point, I'm pretty sure in the past they've done it with Barna. Okay, and Barna, Barna, I'm just I'm yeah, kind of yeah, the, yeah, the research whatever, but. Yeah. The but research I, arm of that. And just so that you guys know, Ligonier Ministries, of course, is the ministry of the late Dr. R.C. Sproul, um, who was uh, somebody that you should check out. Uh, can't recommend his stuff highly enough, even though he's a Presbyterian. We'll forgive him for that. <laughs> he's in heaven, and he found out when he got to heaven that us Baptists were correct. And so the Lord... <laughs> The Lord corrected him, and so, but no. And welcome to and with welcome grace. to with grace, Amen. Just like you will welcome all of us for all of our wrong ideas. This is true. It was. I, <laughs> God, Poor RC. It, I know, oh, no, man. no. I love RC Sproul. Can't, yeah, he's awesome. Can't can't speak yeah. highly enough of Doctor RC Sproul. But yeah. anyway, yeah. I've learned a lot from him. Amen. But yeah, go ahead, brother. Yeah. No, I was just gonna say. I think to make this interesting, though, instead of us just reading research to you, right. uh, yeah. I figured let's make this a little interesting. Yeah. I think that maybe you and I should go back and forth. I have not looked at the new updated yeah. results for a reason. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I didn't want to cheat. Because I yeah. think that maybe we should make, I don't know, it doesn't have to make a game out of it, but we can maybe choose one. And then? And, and ask, yeah. say, say. That's a good idea. Read the question and be like, how, how, what's the percentage of people that believe this or, dis- right. or disagree with this? And then I have to guess, or you have to guess. Right. And, and we'll see how close we get. So uh, just looking at here, it's like, yeah, so like it would be, let, let, let's, let's, just give it, like, let's take the first one, give it an example. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, so, it, and you guys, if you want, you can actually kind of follow along if you want, if you want yeah, to go to State of Theology. But um, for example, mm-hmm. for example, you and I are probably looking at the first one now. Yes. It says statement number four. Yep. Okay. The, the statement that is being made here is that God learns and, and adapts to different circumstances. Okay? That's the statement. Now, underneath that is a... Oops, as I go... Oops. All right, yeah. Is a kind of scale that right. shows the amount of... Or the percentage of people that strongly disagree, somewhat disagree, not sure, somewhat agree, and strongly agree. So that's mm. your basic survey. That's a, It's your basic survey. Right. Um, there's those five zones. There's the two agrees the two disagrees and then the neutral in the middle right right? um i i would like to include agree and disagree as one Uh, oh uh, oh somewhat disagree and strongly disagree i want to combine those two okay all right yeah yeah yeah, you know what i mean yes because i mean let's let's they're they're kind of the same thing let's just be honest pretty much i mean if you're if you're strongly agreeing or strong yeah i know what you mean i I want to i want to see basically the percentages on either side of neutral right right that's 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 where i'm at it's interesting too like if you're on here i just noticed that you can you can click on view in data explorer and you can like you can bring it down to like um like different regions and stuff so like what what you know which is neat but what we're going to focus on is the overarching of all regions all ages you know all together but it's just yeah the the major compilation right No, that's awesome so for example really cool for example god learns and adapts to different circumstances right (laughs) (laughs) sorry i'm giggling because that's just it seems so obvious anyway um i don't want to i don't want to uh, sometimes, so, yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's like it hurts. I have to admit, and I'm going to confess this sin to you guys too <laughs> on on the pod. Sometimes I, I have a bad attitude when it comes to stuff like this. I think. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. I it's because I'm like, look. Sometimes the answers to this it just seems so obvious just because it's just all right there. It's in the, in the text, the scripture, right and, there. and not just that too. But, it's like with with this particular one, right? But I have, a, but I, yeah. I I say that to say that I have a bad attitude sometimes because I don't want it. I know that when I laugh like that, right. it, it can seem like I'm being 
yeah, maybe you know, like pious or pious or, or judgmental or whatever. Judgmental, you know what I mean? yeah. yeah, yeah. But but at the same I, time, it's I'm really it's, trying not to be. But but I, I think it's a, I think to, to to give you some encouragement, brother. I think it's I think it's out of a heart of just disappointment. Uh, yeah, know, I it mean, is though it because is. It's, it might be. it's a heart of disappointment because it's like you look at this. I mean, just the the statement, just taking it on its face. Yeah. God learns and adapts to different circumstances. Just take that on its face. Like, take it's the first God. two words. Right, God learns. <laughs> Does that? I mean, okay. That means he's not God. Yeah. That, mean, that means that there is something that God did not know that right. he had to learn about himself or whatever. Yeah, and he mean, has that. He yeah. So yeah, anyway, yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it it, seem, it seems ridiculous to me, but. I mean, so I can't really put myself in the shoes of people that are like, oh, yeah, oh, that sounds good. Right. Because I, it makes no sense. Like, right. It makes no sense to me. <laughs> anyway, so in, if you guys are following along, um, the scale below says that uh, 31% or actually if you want to go by the result to the right there. Yeah. 32%. 32. So I, I, that must they must be rounding up. That must be like a percentage, percentage point or something point or in whatever. The yeah, right. They're kind of rounding up. So 32% of people disagree. <laughs> only 32. <laughs> only 32. And not only that, 51% agree I know. with that statement. Now, uh, I think I, I need to... I just... I wonder who are they... Who are these people asking about this? I know. Well, I, I honestly, I think it's, I, it, it's. Well, it says, it says here. Despite the clear teaching of Scripture, this year's survey revealed that approximately half of evangelicals. Wow. So they're, so they're dealing with evangelicals. You're dealing with people who would claim to be, you know, uh, believers. Uh, believers. Yeah. We're not talking about Roman Catholics. We're not talking about people in cults. We're not talking about atheists. We're talking about people who claim to be evangelical, like in churches like ours. And again, that's another terminology we should probably define is what is an evangelical. Evangelical yeah. evangelical just basically means anybody, I would say, who is not Roman Catholic, okay, um, or a part of a cult, one or the other. Part of, you, you know, your regular Protestant mainstream evangelical, that could be Baptist, that could be um, probably a lot of Baptist, a lot of non-denominational, okay? Like mm -hmm. ones that would, that gen gen generically speaking would believe in the in the Bible, uh, would be at churches that uh, you know uh, that would worship Jesus Christ or claim to worship Jesus Christ, ones that we probably would you know maybe disagree with on certain things, but overarchingly you know whatever. And so these are the people that make up those churches. And so according to this, you have 32 percent who disagree, uh, only 32 who disagree with the statement that God learns. And it's like that's that's uh, that's amazingly disheartening. Not that's to be whatever, startling. it's startling. Yeah. But it's also understandable because I, I'll I'll argue this, and again, I know we want to get to more. I was going to say, but, why would someone believe that? Right. Let's, well, I mean, let's try to understand what they would. I think. What's their reasoning? I think first and foremost, it's a it's lack of teaching on the sovereignty of God, uh, okay. which is a staple of who God is. It's one of those staples of my doctrine and theology. Yeah. Uh, like I said at the beginning, when it, when we. You, you, you mentioned just those first two words, God learns. Um, and then I my response was, it means that he's not God. Okay, so what we're, what we're dealing with here is churches that are not teaching who the one true God really is. And I think that how you teach who God is is that God can do what he wishes, because that's what God is, okay? He is a being that is outside of ourselves. He is a being who has created the universe. He's the one that's absolutely 100% in control. And therefore, everything that he does is as a result of his good and sovereign plan. A lot of that's not taught in evangelicalism. A lot of that is taught that you're the one that's in control of your destiny, that you have your own free will, that you uh, that God kind of adapts and you know to your feelings and your emotions and your situation. Um, and I think that that to some level brings some kind of comfort to people, knowing that you know God is right there along with you. And that, you know, maybe, again, you get into other doctrines and dealing with prayer and stuff like that. Like, is God, you know, as God answers my prayers right along? I mean, how does prayer—I mean, you get into a lot of that issue. Um, and so, you know, it brings people some comfort kind of knowing that maybe what I am doing through my struggle and situation kind of helps. But at the same time, uh, you know, it detracts from who God actually is. Even the idea of, like, salvation. We talked about last time reprobation and election, right? Um, you know, we talked about free will theology and, and the idea of kind of piecing together the idea of, of well, does the fact that God elects certain people, does that make him somehow this, you know, 
you know, tyrant in the sky who's just kind of dealing out death and judgment. You know what I mean? And uh, and I think that that's honestly how people see it because they haven't been taught and they haven't been taught the right way. And um, yeah, go but, ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no. I, I know I, I'm ranting. You, sorry. You, you yeah. mentioned no, no. That's great. You you had mentioned that I think one of the things you said just now was that there's so much emphasis put on the you know God is with you, God is with you, God yeah. is all that stuff. How can you find comfort that God is with you? How can right. you make that happen with a God who doesn't know everything? That's exactly it. That's how can the you question. find comfort in a God like that? You can't. Uh, well, because because right. it, if you're denying God's omniscience, right? There's no comfort there. There's at not. all. It's where's the comfort? I don't get it. I don't get it. You're finding I, your comfort in a God that doesn't is not in control. Well, like you're going through a situation. You know what I mean? You're going through a situation. Let's say that you're going through a, a uh, you know, a major health issue or something like that in your life, or you lose a loved one suddenly, or you are, you know, whatever, some major problem in your life. Do you really want a God who is learning alongside you, who doesn't know what's going to happen tomorrow? Right. Do you really want a God? And, <laughs> and a God, by the way, who's adapting to circumstances. Think about that for a second, because that, that's what it is, adapting to different yeah. circumstances. I adapt to different circumstances because I'm a finite creature. Okay, right. I I'm forced by those circumstances yeah. to adapt. Do you really want a God who does the same thing? Yeah, because what that means is that there's something outside of this God's control. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean about who He is? It means that He's not God. It means that He's no better than you and me. Right. It means that He's uh, it it gets into the character and nature of who God is. And so yeah, that is, Third, that's, it's that's startling, man. It is. And you know. Uh, the State of Theology website brings up some verses here. Mm. Um, you know, obviously the Bible affirms the truth that the triune God is both omniscient, uh, meaning that he knows all things, and right. immutable. Yep, unchangeable. Ooh, immutable. That's a good vocab word. Yeah, that's word a good right vocab there. word. Yeah, it just means unchangeable. He, yeah, you know, he does it not change. Doesn't change. He yep. cannot and does not cannot change. Cannot and does not. Nope. Um, there are um, a few verses that, that or, or, or they cite uh, some verses that uh, right. that confirm that. Uh, 1 John 3.20, for whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and Amen. he knows everything. Amen. Doesn't get much clearer than it that. It doesn't. And then I and I also, um, my favorite there is John uh, is James 1.17, yeah, about, about the Father, of, the father yeah. of Life, and who they're, uh, the Father of Lights, it, he, going back, it says, every good yeah. and perfect gift is from above, yep. meaning from God, coming down from the Father of Lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Very clear. He doesn't change. He doesn't it's, change. It's right there. And so the and, idea of him learning yeah. or, you know, adapting, that means he changes. So you deny scripture. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's even in the Old Testament. Too. Yep. Malachi 3, yep. 6, for I, the Lord, do not change. Yep. He said it. Said it right out. I, <laughs> I, it's as clear as that. I mean, uh, Isaiah 46, 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish all my purpose. Amen. Right. Amen to that. So it's, it's tough to read that uh, basically 51% of the people here in this study— In this study, right. —just either don't know or disagree with the Bible. Right, on that. absolutely. I know, it's, it's, That's it's hard. a sad thing, you know, but um, you know, I'm looking here, though, um, on a positive note, I think we kind of read this wrong because the first one, um, the first, because he has, because if you notice, if you keep going down, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's the evangelical portion. There's of this, the evangelical, right? which, which the first one that we were citing, that was, that was just, uh, just people in general, just adults, just adults in general. Okay. Whereas the U.S. evangelical is a little bit better. Okay, okay. Uh, with only 43 percent disagreeing, which is still a sad number. That's still sad. <laughs> That's still a sad number. But, but it, is, it, is, it is a tad more encouraging. It is, though. yeah. That at in churches, anyways. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't see that at first, but but still, that's like it. Literally, is fifty fifty. And you know what? I'll say this. I, I you know, uh, that's hard. Speaking as from a pastor, it doesn't change the discouragement on that one. But it doesn't. But at the same time, it's like it's it's a it's a more understandable figure because speaking about it as a pastor, this is normal. You go into a church. Uh, you know, especially, and I still find it with people is like you ask them the same question, and um, I think you're going to find that you know if you just ask them this this question blatantly, I think that you're going to get a fifty fifty percent response really? depending upon the people that you that you talk to. Now you would have a lot more insight on that than I do. Right? But that would that I, that is 
That yeah. is not expected. It, it It's not. But I think also it's just a matter of, you know, it's, 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 it's the danger of mainstream evangelicalism that has gotten away from biblical authority and the encouragement of people, you know, being in the Word themselves each and every day, studying doctrine. You know, there, there's this—even the whole idea of state of theology, brother, is—and I sense it every so often— is that there's almost like a aversion to theology in the life of the local church. Like if you're, if you are, if, like to, like an aversion to reading, not just reading the scripture, but like delving deeper into the like state. a negative connotation, like a negative connotation. Like well, it's or like all, it's a dirty word or well, something. Like I'll give you a perfect example. Is like the the there's always this, and sometimes you hear it in the life of the local church, like head knowledge versus heart knowledge, and that somehow okay. if it's just you know, if you're just reading commentaries and you're studying the languages and you're getting into it, that somehow your heart is not in it. Now, okay. I will say this. I will say this. Is that – can have I met guys who are like that? Yes. And, yeah, I've been there too, where it's all head knowledge. It's all – but I'm going to tell you. They're taking that point to the absolute extreme, though. Well, I'm going to tell you what I run into more often than not. I, I run into very good-hearted – and this is me being very – Nice now, okay. Very, very big and good-hearted Christian people who utilize as an excuse not to delve deeper into the text of Scripture, okay. Um, and and what I mean by that is that they utilize what as an excuse. Utilize that that danger of having it all oh, be head knowledge. Got you. Okay. They don't want to know so much that they become an intellectual, right? Quote, like quote intellectual, and right. they don't feel with their okay, right? And and so yeah. I mean maybe I'm not explaining it correctly, but but I mean like but the thing is this is like I I see far far sorry go ahead I, I I'm see, interrupting you yeah you know no, and I get it, just the idea I see far more in the life of the local church just speaking as a pastor to the intellectual aspects of of the faith. Uh, than I do the heart aspect. And because why? Well, because reading is harder, okay? Being in the Word every day is hard. Studying theology is hard. To know all the terminologies and stuff like that, that's tough. And, and, and you know, you get into the issue of the gospel. Is it necessary to be saved? No. I mean, because the, go the gospel is simple. It's yeah. believe in Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. But it, Yeah, it's not believe in Jesus Christ. Read this five book anthology right. on on, right. on on the Bible. Right. I mean, I, yeah, and it, then be saved. It's yeah, right. I love there's there's a you should look this up. I, I, maybe I mentioned it, and I, I I think I may have mentioned it either to you on the pod or or maybe to somebody else uh, recently. But there's a an amazing sermon by uh, Pastor Alistair Begg uh, where he's preaching about the thief on the cross, yeah. and he. He gets up and he's talking about it. And by the way, it wasn't even what the whole sermon was about. It was just a side point in this sermon. So if you w watch the whole sermon, it's just he makes this point. But he's teaching about the thief on the cross. And, you know, he was talking about, like, the you know, what happened when the thief got to heaven. Jesus, of course, on the cross told him, you know, you know, today thou shalt yep. be with me in paradise. And, uh, and so the thief on the cross gets to heaven. And uh, you know he's there, and Saint Peter's there, going to let him into the pearly gates or whatever. This is how this is how yeah, Alistair yeah. Begg describes it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and he's like, well, you know, do you think that he's going to ask? You know, do you can you explain to me uh, the golden chain of redemption? Can you can you explain <laughs> right. to me the word justification? And he's like, I don't know, I haven't even heard it. <laughs> and uh, you know, and he's like, hang on just a second. And uh, well, why should we let you into heaven? And the whole crescendo of the whole thing is is that the man responds. The man in the middle said I could come. The man on the middle cross said I could come. And that's a beautiful thing. I, yeah. I'm not discounting the simplicity of the gospel. Right. But I think as Christians, <clears throat> our call is to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, workmen that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's what 2 Timothy says, 2 Timothy 3.16. And, um, and so, uh, or excuse me, 2 Timothy 2.15. And uh, I, I think that this aversion to theology comes from a, an oversimplified version of Christianity that while it's, it's good-hearted and wants to have it where it's accessible yeah. to everybody and anybody, at the same time allows for almost a spirit of laziness when it comes to, hmm. to knowledge of Scripture. And, and I think that pastors play into this because and it affects their ministries. And it affects, you know, like, because, again, if you're a pastor who's preaching, the, you know, deeper theology, deeper theological things from the pulpit, it's a little bit tougher for people to listen to and pay attention to. 
um, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna bode well for you numerically. Okay, it just it just traditionally it doesn't. Whereas if you kind of have a, a cotton candy kind of message about God's love and some of these simplistic things. Uh, yeah, you're going to fill pews, but your people are going to be a lot of, you're going to be exactly what the scripture talks about, zeal without knowledge. And that's really what the most, I think that mm. that's what we're seeing in terms of the, the, the statistics here. I'm sorry, I'm going, no. we, we only, we barely got through the first one and I'm over There's here. a lot of facets to it too, because yeah. you could almost say there's almost a fear of evangelism too, well, it, yeah. it rooted in there too. Oh yeah. Because, you know, obviously, like you mentioned, our, our our call, part of that call is to spread that message to others. Yes. And a lot of times people just, they fear communicating that message for yes. whatever various reason. That's a whole pod right That's there. That's a whole but, pod. We should talk but, about that. Uh, point, yeah. But being content with knowing the simple truth that you do without diving deeper kind of creates that comfort zone. It does. So that you don't have to evangelize, right? In your own mind, you know. But but I and I've also felt this too. And and again, we'll get to this. Yeah. I apologize, but it's like I I kind of feel like coming at it from somebody who, again, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but like, look, I'm I'm studying doctorally on the doctoral yeah. level this stuff. I I have been confronted, especially by lay people, you know, and good-hearted lay people, you know what I mean, who kind of they treat the study of the word is if it's something useless. Um, and they don't say it like that. And I know that they don't mean it like that, but in, I think in the approach in, in the approach to it. And what I mean by that is just like, well, I can just study the Bible and I'm, I'm just as good hmm. as you, I, even though I don't, even though I don't. And th and that's true. Okay. We're all on the same page theologically, but hmm. you know, or not theologically, we're all on the same page, spiritually speaking. I don't, I don't, but you, you got to understand that when we get into answering questions like this, can God learn? And yeah. when you have 50% of evangelicals who answer it unbiblically, okay, there's something wrong. And so, and what's the, what is wrong with it? Well, it's we're, we obviously are not teaching correctly. Right. Obviously, you're not listen, listening to the theologians who know their stuff. You right. know what I mean? And, uh, something's and so, wrong. Yeah, something's wrong. Or, yeah. you know, they're, or you just have false teachers, one or the other. Yeah, anyway, well. <laughs> anyway, you know, I mean, we're too. listening to it. But anyway, I'm, go, I'm going off. Do you want to yeah. do the next one? Yeah. You, you so, want, if you want to pick a random one, yeah. Let me let me see if I can find one here. See, um, see if how close I can get to yeah. the percentage. And I do. Do each of them have the yeah both the evangelism or the evang evangelicals? Yeah, answer and the I adult? think so. So from now on, do you want to focus on the evangelicals? Yeah, one? let's focus on okay. the evangelical side. Um, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm not looking. Okay. You can pick. So one. here we go. This is this is evangelical, and actually, this one gives uh, statistics from several years. Actually, going back to the first one in in uh, sixteen. But okay. So uh, statement number. Well, uh, yeah. yeah it's it fine. says it I'm says, not looking at it. So, God accepts the worship of all religions, <laughs> including Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Oh boy. Okay. So yeah. God accepts the worship of all religions. Okay. Now this is evangelicals. Oh boy. U.S. Uh, evangelical respondents. I remember, I think we talked about this one last time or the time before. Mm -hmm. I remember this one, and it was bad. Mm -hmm. Evangelicals, I'm going to say 42% agree. Um, <laughs> actually... It, with that well amazingly amazingly and sadly you were right on for 2020 that was the exact percentage for 2020 was 42 percent and unfortunately it's gone up oh wow really 56 percent of evangelicals ag believe that agree oh that's rough dude god accepts all accepts the worship of all religions including <sighs> christianity judaism and islam 56 percent in 2022 that is disheartening. <laughs> I mean, he writes here, he says, um, this year's survey also revealed a significant increase, and this goes right along with it, um, in those who deny Christ's uh, divinity. Uh, and uh, actually, nah, that I was reading the next one. It, that was that was kind of going along with it. But um, but no, I mean, still sad. I mean, su super sad. I mean, as far as 56%. Uh, you know, and actually, it's funny because looking at the statistics, right, for this one. Now, this is uh, statement number three. 2016 um, was uh, four. Well, four, I'm there now. Four, yeah, I, I got there now. 48, 48 percent in mm -hmm. 2000, and then it 
Then you had 51%. It went up a little bit in 18. And then it dipped in 2020. And then it shot right back up way beyond what's in it, 2022. What's interesting about 2020, though, if you check out the stats on that, yeah. the number of people that were not sure grew up grew in that, oh, in that year, too. Oh, yeah, that's it se- true. It seems that the, sum, or the agrees and the somewhat agrees kind of remained a little steady there. But people who didn't know or, right. or decided to remain neutral grew in that year mm. as well, which actually might be even more disconcerting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now they're now they're uh, there's there's more who are sure of the right. wrong thing, you know, yeah, and, we, oh. or at least feel like they're sure of the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's that's that's, that's rough. Man. That's rough, man. Eek. Mm. <laughs> Eek. Mm-mm. You know, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, if you look at that list, all, well, all, first of all, this says all religions, which is bad enough. Right. But it kind of singles out Christianity, Judaism and Islam there. Right. In that statement. So those three are kind of put at the top of the of the list as far as what these people are being asked about. I assume that they're getting asked this question word for word as it appears here. I'm assuming, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, that would absolutely. Be probably how to do it research wise. So in their mind already, they have Christianity, Judaism, and Islam in their head, right? As those three first ones that they're thinking about, mm-hmm. right? The three mains, yeah. So in their mind, they think of Judaism. They think of maybe Old Testament, right? Maybe, right. I'm just I'm putting myself in their heads. Right, 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 right. Trying to see. Yeah, yeah. Why see where they they're might at. Even right. Possibly start to think. Go about down this, this path. But right. the thing that really trips me up is the Islam one. I know. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I know. Because uh, first of all, Judaism, you know, doesn't believe in the Messiah, Christ. Right. They believe one is coming. Right. Yeah, right. This hasn't come yet. And you can uh, you can almost see main, the connection. Main, mainline Judaism. I'm talking. Well, about. you can, well you can almost see the connection between Christianity and Judaism. I mean, mainline. Right. And even dispensationalists, I mean, sure. make that connection sure. as well. I mean, to sure. a certain extent, but which, which, whatever on that. But Judaism you know I mean? is essentially Christless, right? It's right? the Old Testament, right? right. I mean, I, we can agree on that, right? Islam, though, man. I mean, that's that is. <laughs> I mean, Jesus is mentioned in in Islamic teachings, right? Right. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's mentioned he's as mentioned a prophet, in the Quran. right? Yeah, he's mentioned in the Quran, right? Yep. Yeah. Um. So yeah, obviously feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so me, I'm trying to see there where they would make that discernment from because it's Islam is essentially it's Christless as well, right? In the way that we worship Christ, obviously, right? But right. Man, well, well, well. This is the problem. Is like with but with, worship with this, is the key word there too. Well, this is the issue. Is accepts all worships and all religions, including these ones. And and I think again, this like goes back. This, statement. this yeah, it goes back to universalism. It also goes back to an aversion to theology and precision in terms of yeah. our theology. Yeah. Because again, let's just take Christianity and Judaism for a second. What they're gonna, you know, I mean, just from the outset, we have the we have the Jewish scriptures sitting right here on the desk. Okay, we have we have Genesis to Malachi. And you read through those, and then you get in the New Testament, and they're going to say, oh, well, you worship the same God. And mm-hmm. and because of the connection also with Islam and Judaism, I mean, in the sense that they are, you know, I mean, they reject the—they they, they don't complete. this is the problem, is that they don't completely reject the, the Old Testament. They don't completely reject the Old Testament scriptures. They, they, com- they reject portions of it. But essentially what they would argue is that they are the true sons of Abraham, okay, the, the children of the promise. Mm-hmm. And so there are connections between all of these things. But unless you understand the dynamics, the theology of it, um, or and, – and if that's important to you, obviously you're going you're gonna, to um, – you're going to come to the conclusion that we find here, that it's, that it's, it's all the same God. It's the same religion. Mm. Um, what's the difference? And – and also an overly inflated, again, idea of, you know, I mean, concepts that we all love, but again, things that need to be more better defined, like the love of God and the grace of God. Our God is loving and gracious, but he also defines what it means to be saved. And there's one way. Very of salvation. clearly, by the way, John right. 14, 6, guys. Yeah, there's one That's way. That's one it. way. Yeah. And so, yeah. As, as, as much as people uh, want to use the word, this, this, I hate this buzzword, by the way. Right. Inclusive. This right. word, this inclusive, inclusive. This know, inclusive. Yeah. inclusive. guys. I'm sorry. It, it, strictly speaking, it's an exclusive thing. It is. It is. It's, it's salvation is exclusive. It right. is not inclusive. It is exclusive. It is. In other words, one way. There is a clearly defined path. 
Exactly. There are no multiple branches, no multiple paths. One path that's right. leads to salvation. One. That's right. Exclusively. One. It, exactly. That's it. Amen. Amen, and brother. It's not a gray area, guys. It's just not. It's biblical and 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 again. So to say that he accepts worship from all religions is just fa- it's just not true at well, all. Well, first and foremost, I mean, just breaking this down again, we focused mostly on the Christianity, Judaism, right. and Islam aspect, negating all of the contradictions between all those. The fact that <laughs> Islam uh, tells you know number one, you know, yeah, besides the denial of the deity of Jesus Christ. But also, like in the Quran, I mean, it essentially says to kill all infidels, including Jews and Christians. You know what yeah. I mean? So, I mean, yeah, like, yeah, yeah you know, it, it, but God accepts that. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, whatever. Right. But all religions, what exactly does that mean? It, what, what does all religions nece- necessitate? You're, say- you're saying that God accepts worship from those who refuse to accept his son. Well, that's it. That's it. And purposeful contradictions yeah. to each other. It's just just, just, in, just to, to each other in general. So it's yeah. like... You know, like, you know, with, with, or worse, I mean, I could come up with any religion that I want. I can make up a religion. Um, you know, I mean, yeah. I've told Adam this before. It's like, I'm related to Joseph Smith. Uh, you know what I mean? And so, you know, and he, I, so I have members of my family. Don't hold who are, that against him. I know. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, so I have members of my family who made up their own religion and deceived, you know, unfortunately, you know, millions of people. And it's like so, and but yet God accepts that. You know what I mean? What a legacy though, you yeah, carry. I know. Yes. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, <laughs> as you, he, as yeah, it, as he's literally rolling his I eyes. I know. It's like, jeez, you know, no. That's but rough, man. It is. But anyway, yeah. yeah so I that's know. that's again. That's sad. Um, so sad. I got one for you. Yeah. All right. This one is about the Bible. Okay. All right. So, um, without cheating, without looking at no, your no, screen. No, no, I'm not looking. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close Don't it. Look. Yep. Don't yep. look. I'm closing it. All right. Here, uh, this is statement number sixteen. Okay. And again, this is this has been kind of updated throughout the years. There's four results here: 16, 18, 20, okay. 20, 20, 22. We'll go with twenty twenty two. Sure. Right. So this is what you're going to be uh, asking or we're answering. The Bible, like all sacred writings, <laughs> contains helpful accounts of ancient myths, but is not literally true. Oh, wow. So we're looking for the 2022 result of how many people, we'll say how many people agree. Agree with that. With that statement. Sadly, I mean, I, I'm that, looking. I, if you want me to read it again, I can. Yeah, read it one more time for me, okay. but yeah. The Bible, like all sacred writings, contains helpful accounts of ancient myths, but is not literally true. So basically what we're saying here is how many people believe that the Bible is not literally true and is just... Right myths and uh right i i'm gonna i'm gonna say because just based upon what i'm seeing here because i mean i'm already seeing a trend in a negative direction so Mm -hmm. not to be mr pessimist today but i'm gonna say at least 50 percent uh i'm gonna no, no, i'm gonna go a little bit higher i'm gonna say i don't know 50 evangelicals evangelicals i would i'm gonna say at least 55 to 56 57 percent I'll 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 go up a little higher. I'll say sixty percent. I'll say sixty percent okay. agree. Yeah. Okay. Be encouraged, brother. Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> Maybe I'm just Mr. Pessimist. Be today. encouraged. Twenty six percent. Really? In yeah. evangelicals. Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Twenty six percent. I got and that actually, one way off. <laughs> at, but it, That's it's good. An, it's encouraging but discouraging at the yeah, same time. But there's still that many. Be, yeah. Well, that and because the numbers gotten higher over the years. <laughs> right. Well. Why? What, what, what are so the trends? Yeah. In, in 2016, only 17 percent agreed with that. Wow. Okay. I mean, still 17 percent. It's yikes. But that's still. It's not. You know, but as from what we've seen comparatively, it's not that not that bad compared to the rest of the state. Right. 2018, it grew to 23 okay, percent. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. but in 2020, it went down to 15. Well, that's that's it, that's it, weird. It dipped to 15 percent, and then it spiked in 2022 to 26 percent. To 26. Yeah. So yep, yep. we we're finding here that I'm just doing ma- quick math. 70 71 percent disagree with that. Well, that's good. Which I'm is, glad for that. You know, that's speaking. It's, you know, that's not not bad. That's not bad at all. But still, you know, I mean, at least there's a, a somewhat higher regard for scripture. You know what I mean? I I guess. I guess, kind of. Kind of. You know what I mean? I don't really but know what to do with that data. It's I know. Kind of weird, right? Yeah. You know, I just, you know, I mean, again, I hate to be a pessimist about all of this, but it's like for me, it's like. But even that, it's like all or nothing. Like seventy percent is yeah. as good as you know. Like, but it's weird. You know, you know like, why? You know why this is yeah, weird to me? Yeah. This data, I, I can't yeah, make heads yeah, or tails yeah, of it. Yeah. Because. You would think, and, and yeah. I, 
and maybe this is in how they do the surveys too. Sure. Because I would I th- I would think that when they give these evangelicals whoever they are this survey that all of these questions are on the survey. Right. And they're just marking off things, right? Right. I strongly disagree. Now, think about this. Yeah. This question, you know, three quarters of the people answering are saying that the Bible's true. Right. The Bible's yeah, literally, the Bible's literally true. true. Right, right. If that's true, mm-hmm. wouldn't we see better answers on a lot of these? I, I would, that's that's the thing that's that's hard because, I mean, it's like, well, yeah, you, you'd think that if you believed literally true, and it makes you wonder, There's like, are they not, not connecting in people's yeah. minds? You know, um, which actually is kind of a little more startling in itself. Yeah, but. that's true. But but again, it comes down to it's funny. I I was thinking about this is like I was listening to some of the uh, uh, sermons from G three, and one of them was Ken Ham. All right, this year, uh, this year's. Are yeah, out, yeah, out? I think so. Yeah, well, oh. at least portions of them. I oh, good. think. Yeah, I don't. I'll have to go I don't. Back and yeah, watch and so. But G three, uh, by the way, yeah. for those of you who don't know, G three, we got to get back there again. We yes. check out our post. 2020 yes we did g3 one there, yeah. podcast that we did <laughs> back in january of 2020 that might have been the first week of february 2020 yeah that's like episode i don't know i forget what the number yeah. is now off the top of my head but we, we did do a g3 recap we did from we like did. three years ago that was awesome and uh i i don't think we've been back since no no well our brother dan COVID, has, but yeah dan's been back oh, we, should have him on. we should have him on and have him talk about yeah. it but that would be good but Anyway, but, good but yeah, no, I was, I, you know, it's it was funny. I was I was listening to Ken Ham because I was wondering if his presentation has changed because I've heard Ken Ham many a time. I met Ken Ham. Um, yeah. I'm not going to tell that story right now, but the, um, <laughs> but uh, the, uh, the arc. But, yeah, you know, but he he um, and his presentation hasn't changed. Uh, <laughs> but that's a good thing. I was going to say, is that good or bad? <laughs> it's it's good. It's really good because what he has. Is because he's always talks about biblical authority when it comes to Genesis. That's the whole thing about gen- about answers in Genesis. Yeah, he's it's very, all about he's very foundational about Genesis. It, because and for good reason. Because if you pull the, the foundation out of yep. that one portion of Scripture, you can pull it out of every other part. Yeah. And so, House of cards. And that's that's the analogy. He always had this same. Uh, he didn't use the graphic, but he talked about it um, in the thing. But it was this graphic of a castle and two castles actually on either side. And, you know, one castle, both castles are shooting cannonballs at each other, and one is shooting at the foundation, and one is shooting up here. And the foundation, of course, is God's Word, and that's what they're shooting at with us. And so if you can attack the foundation of God's Word, yeah. we've lost. If you know, That's why we can't give up ground on, on the Bible. Um, right. Cannot do it. But uh, Cannot, will not. Nope. Uh, my turn? Yes, oh, go. Okay, yeah. Um, let me, uh, let me, I'm sorry, I, I had one, and then I, uh, I clicked it off. Um here we go. Um, where where are you? All right. Um, I'm not looking. Unless these are, yeah, oh, these are. I, I I went ahead and picked one, so hopefully we don't pick the same one. All right. Yeah. Um. I I got one. I got one okay. here. A little 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 more spicy. Oh, um, spicy. Yeah. One. Yeah. Right. Um. Again, speaking speaking of you know you work with youth and everything else. Yeah. Okay. Big big uh, S question here. Sex outside of traditional marriage. Is a sin. That wasn't the Ooh. one that you were going to pick. No. Was, all right. It's a so sex outside of traditional marriage is a sin. Sex outside of traditional marriage is a sin. Okay. So we're, I'm looking at people who agree with that. Yes. Okay. Like the percentage of those so, who agree. Fornication is wrong. Yep. Okay. Oh man, we we live in a time. <laughs> I know we live in sick times, brother. We do. That's got to be upwards of like sixty, sixty-five percent that, uh, or, or that no, is a sin. So it would be the other way. I'm going to say they're agreeing that it's a sin. Yeah, they're agreeing okay. it's a sin. Yeah. So that's got to be low. That's got to be like twenty-two, twenty-three percent. Not, not, not to date myself, but is that your final answer? <laughs> <laughs> The kids, the kids yeah. today won't know that one. But anyway, yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. So what did you say, 20? Yeah, something like that, 22, 23%. So, let's say 23%. Well, well, once again, I'm glad to be able to be encouragement back to you. Oh. Um, it, it, actually, the percentage of agree with that statement has gone up. 94% agree amongst evangelicals. Whoa! Can you believe that? Praise God for that. I mean, at okay. least. I mean, so so like it's statement that's 25. That's interesting. So sex outside of marriage, outside of marriage 
is a sin. 94% of people agree. And and going back in time, that hasn't changed much. Because going back since 2016, 91% wow. agreed. It, okay. it dipped for a couple years. 2018 was 89% agreed. 2020, it went up to 90%. And, and this year, 2022, it went up to 94 That's encouraging. That's it. That is. I have to say, I, I mean, just because you and I kind of keep our eyes on or keep our fingers on the pulse of the culture and try right. or at least trying to um, yeah it's a moving target yeah you can you can see where my surprise is on that it's like um, maybe i'm applying general culture to evangelical culture but i mean even in, even in evangelical circles it seems that that is more and more acceptable these days yeah just uh, sex outside of marriage fornication um it seems like it's a more and more accepted thing um because I think there's also a rise in, 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 I don't know if I'm using the right word, but like pra- pragmatism, just like that practical, like, oh, right. we should just live together and it's easier to yeah, do all it, this. It's it. just, you know, th- there's almost a, an acceptedness to it uh, right now just because it's just more well and, and the, ingrained. The, I mean, the question, but and again, I'm glad, while well, I'm glad for that, I'm glad that, that they do see that it is a <laughs> sin because, I mean, it is yeah. very, very clear in scripture that it is a sin. Mm-hmm. Um like you said, I mean, like the, the the practical implications of it, like, okay, is it just a matter of acknowledging it's a sin, but I'm just going to do it anyway? You know what I mean? Kind of thing. Or is it acceptable sin? Acceptable sin. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Jerry Bridges, you know what I mean? Like yeah, you yeah. say, it's like, I, 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 maybe. I, I think on the street, and this is where I think, you know, as it, as the rubber meets the road, it can't um, be all of it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, acknowledge, continue, ag- acknowledging it's a sin is one thing. Doing something about it's another. You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> well, that's the issue. Maybe Always. that's where it's at. That's... And that's and that's kind of the thing is because it's like, yeah. well, because I think that if we were to, you know, again, I think in our church, I mean, any, 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 if I preached on this, you'd get a lot of amens. But again, sure, sure. At the same time, you, it's and, like, and yeah. You, know what? you probably get amens from people who yeah, would be have, actively have, involved. Be active, yeah. I mean, that. I, th- that's my point is yeah. like, they're, they're going to say, yeah. Like I know, and, and guilty is charged. You know, and praise God for the grace of God. Ex- yes, and praise God for yes. the grace of God. Because exactly. again, you know, because we don't want to whatever on that. But at the same time, should we continue to sin that grace may abound? That's that's my that's my only acknowledgement. But it is yeah. encouraging to know that the percentage is going up. That this is, and I think maybe that has to do with uh, just the sexual nature of our culture. I mean, reactionary. I mean, we see how terrible it is, and it's like. Mm. Um, mm. you know, I think that, uh, that's a good thing. Um, at least that they acknowledge that one portion of scripture is true, <laughs> mm. you know, but anyway, yeah. Interesting. You know, yeah. I, I should, uh, go back cause I just found a little piece of data here. That's, that clarifies this would, this would probably have been more helpful at the beginning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. It's a, a definition of what they consider evangelicals to be. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I didn't see that. So when we're talking about evangelicals and my, my apologies if this is kind of confusing because this would apply to questions that we've previously talked about. Sure. But evangelicals were defined by Lifeway Research, the the company that uh, that Ligonier partnered with, with right. to do this, right. uh, as people who strongly agreed with the following four statements. Okay. Okay. Cool. The Bible is the highest authority for what I believe. Amen. Yep. Which is interesting for what we just talked about with the Bible question. Yep. Uh, it is very important for me personally to encourage non-Christians to trust Jesus Christ as their Savior. So ev- evan- ev- yeah, evangelical, evangelizing, uh, right? Yep. Jesus Christ's death on the cross is the only sacrifice that could remove the penalty of my sin. Amen. And only those who trust in Jesus Christ alone as their Savior receive God's free gift of eternal salvation. Amen. Yeah. Strongly agree. Yeah. Which is interesting with the other question that we with just asked. With the other asked. question that we did. Hmm. It's, <laughs> it's like they say one thing and then say another thing. It's right. weird. It's a it's contradictory weird. thing. It's so weird, weird, the data. Absolutely. Data's weird. It is. <laughs> it's That's, so odd. Guys, if we, could, if we could take one thing from this, data is weird. I know. It That's is. It. It's, it's very, weird. very strange, it's you know. All right. I got yeah, a, yeah, I yeah, got go a ahead. spicy yeah. one for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You thought that one was spicy. Yeah, I'm going to click this off so I'm not tempted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not tempted to look. <laughs> cheater. <laughs> cheater. No. You're a cheater. No. Um, this might be one of the spicier questions. Okay. Okay. And it's four words. Okay. Abortion is a sin. <laughs> yeah. If you um, know, If you know Tim and I well, for those of you who are watching, if you know us well, you know where we stand on abortion. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, goes without saying. Although lost, lost we should people. probably say it. Yep. Go ahead. You can say it. I can say it too. <laughs> Abortion's I'm... murder, guys. Amen. Uh, yep. Actually, we had a great pod in yeah, the beginning, Marissa, with Marissa yeah. on this very subject, <laughs> and it was 
awesome. I thought it was awesome. It was one, great. one of our one of our best yeah, best episodes. One of the best episodes absolutely. Uh, so shout out to Marissa. Yeah. Um, and um, I think that might have been like episode four or five I know, or we, something. Yeah, it was early she on. was one of the early ones. Yeah. Yeah. She sure. was our first interview. Was she really? I, I think th- so. Oh, was yeah. it Jeff? It might have been Jeff. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah. Anyway. But anyway. Yeah. But so yeah, um, it was. Yeah, it was good. But for this one in particular, we're looking to see how many people agree that a, agree a, that it's a sin. Abortion is a sin. Okay. Yeah. How, how many evangelicals yeah. agree with that statement? You know, it's funny. I, you know, in answering this, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna argue on the higher side of agreement. Okay. Um, because, 2022. Yeah, for 2022, I'm gonna argue on the higher side of agreement, just because again, I think that that's. I could be completely wrong. I'd be, I'd be shocked. Uh, although I will say this. I mean, um, I, I, and I've experienced this as a pastor. I mean, I've had, I've had visitors of our church who had, were attending here for a year, and then I, uh, when the Roe versus Wade thing came yeah. down, I mentioned it from the pulpit. Praise God! And then we lost him because I was, you know, a, a terrible bigot for whatever uh, that. And, uh, you know, which is fine. You know what I mean? Whatever. I mean, hey, hey. I, I'm going to stand on God's truth. Truth uh, is the truth, know, man. Truth is the truth. Sorry. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, but not sorry. Like you say. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? That's right. Sorry, not sorry. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say, as far as agree that abortion is a sin, I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm gonna, you know, I mean, I'm going to say in the 80s, uh, maybe, maybe 85. 85. Pick, 85. Is that your final answer? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, <laughs> sorry. It's my final answer. Yes. All right. Yeah. 85%. Yeah. You're close, actually. Am I? Okay. All, all right. right. You're actually on the low side. Am I? Really? Yeah. Wow. 2022, 91%. Praise God. That's good. Yep. Amen. 91%. That's and great. And that, that actually has grown over the years. Has it really? Let me go so it. be encouraged. Yeah. It's the last one. Oh, okay. The very, okay. The last one over here. Oh, uh, all right. Awesome. Yeah. It's number 26. Uh, so in 2016, 87% agreed. 88 uh, I'm sorry, in 2018 and 2020, 88, so it kind of held steady. Yeah, it held steady for a couple um, years. And then 2022, 91%. Amen. So oh, that's good. Praise it, God. Yeah. Um, that's pretty huge, that, actually. That is. That's awesome. And uh, uh, there's really no... Um, <laughs> not a lot to say more than that i mean i know yeah well well that's a, well you know you praise god for it because again it's it's it, it speaks to god's value of life well yeah i mean and and you know here this is what i'm talking about okay like you know and again i was kind of you know dumping on the whole idea of you know deep theology and and people who kind of negate those things and i certainly i think that our our churches we need to start teaching people better um we need, and I, and I think that we need to get away from this idea of, you know, the head the head knowledge versus the heart knowledge, and couple them both. Because I think in order for you to have proper heart knowledge, you need to have proper head knowledge. Yeah, okay, they're linked. It's like, it's like, it's like, you know, I, I have a heart. I, I, have, I love my wife. Okay, I have emotions for my wife. And why is that? Because the more and more I know her, I've been married for going on fifteen years. It's like I, the more and more I know her, the more and more I love her. It's the same thing with God. Okay, that's how it should be in the text of Scripture. But um, there's also a simplistic love. And there's certain simple things that cr- uh, Christians tend to agree on um, across the evangelical uh, landscape, and mm-hmm. it, and that's encouraging. I mean, the idea of, you know, I mean, especially in light of the culture that we're living, because again, it's like you know, you have, I mean, just so much debauchery in regard to the, you know, the, just the sexual movement, and mm-hmm. um, I will say, I think a lot of that too. I think the reason why that's remained steady, if not grown a little bit, is because of how much the the pagans have been playing their hands lately i i it's you you would have asked me 10 years ago that i would have as a pastor had to put in our doctrinal statement a definition of what a man and a woman is i would have told you that you're nuts okay and that's just a, a symptom of the culture that we are in yeah, right we've now. lost our minds we've lost our minds yeah. completely and but the good part about it is is that you know good solid christian people in this case, um, you know, they see it. Yeah. And hopefully, Lord willing, that draws them to more and more of God's truth, not just the sexual ones that are clear in the text of Scripture, but some of the other deeper truths about God's Word that are a little bit, that should be um, delved into a little bit deeper. But anyway, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? And so, yeah, no, yeah. brother, absolutely. Yeah, this uh, this ex- this explainer kind of yeah. at, at the beginning kind of, it, it cites, um, obviously, Psalm 139, uh, you form me together. In, in my, my mother's, mother's womb, womb, right. Inward yep. parts, your eyes saw my unformed, uh, uh, from substance. Um, that that verse there, uh, I won't read the whole thing, but um, it's a very familiar passage, right? Uh, also, it, it cites Luke one, 
uh, with um, John the Baptist in his mother's womb. Right. Uh, jumping for joy. Yeah. Amen. Um, amen. So there's there's and, and just the <laughs> just the, just this taking this statement that you were created in God's image. Yeah. Isn't that enough? I know. I know. <laughs> Just on its own, on its just face, on, just, it's just like, you know, that so that, you know, I mean, it di- it's destruction of the image of God. Yeah. It is, yeah. and uh, so. is what it is, but yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Are there any others on the on there? Uh, one, uh, is it my turn? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, because I know, mean, oh, now, I'm going to have to go back through the entire statement on this, um, you know, at uh, at some point now, because I want to see all of them, but... Um, uh, yeah, we got we got time for we got time for one more. We can here, do one you know more. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, yeah, yeah. we'll make this uh, the yeah, last yeah, one, yeah, and then we can, yeah, and then we'll close so, and get out of here. So, like for instance, um, okay, this one, this one right here. Mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah, all right, yeah. We'll we'll focus on the uh, on the evangelical one here because uh, I find the I find the just regular adult one interesting when you compare we can, it. But we can says, follow up with that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, every Christian has an obligation to join a local church. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So basically it's okay. Yeah. How many how many agree with that statement? So basically we're talking about ecclesiology. Right. Um how many people take ecclesiology seriously? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna say this is low. I'm gonna say because I there there are a lot of people who Yeah. I'm gonna say Maybe a third, thirty-one percent. That agree. That agree. Hmm. No. Well, see, no, I'm changing. Basically, yeah, I know, I know, I'm, I'll I'm, stick I, with I know. See, I'll I'm not. A, yeah, I'm not a. Uh, I'm not a good poker player, brother. I'll, 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 <laughs> stick, I'll stick with that. But judging by your response, it's probably yeah. lower. Go ahead. Actually, be, be be encouraged uh, because it, now again the question is: Is every Christian has an obligation to join a local church? Right, and um, and sixty eight percent actually agree in evangelicals. Wow, that's shocking to me. That is shocking. Um, and uh, <laughs> well, yeah, from what we've seen, that's that's a shocking number. It, it is a shocking number because again, it's like in a good you way. know, well, it is. And I wonder, and this is where I would like to get into some of the the more regional data. Um, a little bit more here. I mean, I, I'll look that up afterwards, but I yeah. mean, like, you know, as far as, you know, where, where we're at, because, I mean, are we talking Bible Belt? Are we talking Northeast? Because obviously in the Northeast, we are in a, um, it's a spiritual drought up here, okay? It's tough. And, and it's, yeah. it's really, really tough in regard to uh, church life. But, um, but yeah, every Christian has an obligation yeah. to join the local church. 68% agree, and huh. uh, 26% disagree. Um, Interesting. It says, um, and and I'm, I'm looking to see. They don't have the the. Uh, maybe that was a new trend here. Um, I was trying to. They, they didn't have the the 2016 or anything like that. Maybe I just can't find it. Maybe I'm maybe I'm whatever here. But um, but I'd be interested in seeing what that data was. You know what I mean from previous years, just to see. But I mean, he says right here. It says right. for much of American history, the influence of Christianity resulted in a high rate of church attendance and, and church membership was normative, and yet increasing secularization in the United States has mm-hmm. led to more Americans identifying as non-religious. In addition, the entrenched cultural value of individuals makes it unsurprising that most Americans deem church membership as optional for Christians. But I, I would I would say based upon that is that, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's in a sense, um, you know, 68% is discouraging in the sense of like, okay, um, you know, it's only 68%, but like you said, I mean, like I would have guessed a lot lower myself. Yeah. I would have guessed like thirty something percent myself. Yeah, I mean, you see the rising, what I see. Yeah. You see the rising trend, even just in just in church culture, right? If you want to call it that. Yeah. You see this rise in like home churches. Yeah. If you want to even call them that, yeah, it's not even. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this gets into a whole bunch kinda, of issues. One of these days, I kind of roll gonna, my yeah, eyes. At I that know. One. Um. Uh, yeah, we can. That's a whole pod, right? That's there, a too. whole pod to talk about uh, home churches and stuff like that. Like, what is that? You know, what does, and, that, even and mean? What does that mean? And yeah, yeah, interesting. Um, but there, there is this more. It, it seems to me, at least, this shift into a uh, Christianity is a personal venture, not a corporate one. Right. Does that make sense? And by corporate, exactly. I mean group worship. Um, worshiping as a group of believers it's about me and Jesus, and that's all that I need. Right. And, yeah. Instead of the we do this together, we bear each other's burdens, we we help each other, we keep each other accountable. Well, yeah, <laughs> I and keep it, the, dude. Yeah, that's the accountability. That's a tough... It it almost seems like the home church thing 
and I, again, I don't want to branch too far here, yeah, but I, again, we're talking about the local church, right? Um, people avoid that because they don't want accountability. And that's exactly it. That's really, th- at the end of the day, isn't that what it really comes down to? People speaking truth in your life. And also, by the way, b- this is the other thing. Because you want to be in control of your religious journey or right. whatever. And you, know. and you end up getting into this whole thing because, again, you know, uh, and I think a lot of times. And I'm we generalizing, see, yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I think but, I th- not even so much the home church thing, but, I mean, it's like, okay, well, you know, again, and they're going to cite, well, the, the all the problems with the local church. Like, for instance, a lot of these people may have been burned by a bad pastor. Oh, I'm sure that's or true. Or something along those lines. Those However, problems happen, those by Those problems way. happen in the life of the local they church. Do. We're not saying that the church is perfect. Right. But at the no. same time, <sighs> but the corporate no, entity of it, it, but it's like the fact of, of like, okay, the scripture says to obey your leaders and submit to them, okay? Mm-hmm. Hebrews chapter 13. Why? Because they're keeping watch over your souls. You talked mm-hmm. about accountability. Okay, having a good pastor in your life, good elders in your life, who are watching out for your soul is one of the greatest blessings of the life of the local church. And that's just the elders, by the way. And the You're, elders need that too. And the, the elders way. need that too. <laughs> but 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 that's why it's yeah. it's just a church. It's it's a church family, like you say, working together, pulling together, living life together. You need the corporate identity of the life of the local church in order to survive as a Christian. And and why is that? Well, like you said, you cited accountability because so often we get off the path. So often we can you know, and, 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 and I'm talking off the path on multiple levels. I'm not just talking about sin, okay, which happens to us every single day. I'm talking theologically, too. Is like, you, you show me a home church, and I'm going to show you, like, a, a, a place where just a plethora of ideas and whatever comes out of your mouth is, is you know, the, you know. Is the truth. Is the truth. Yep. You know what I mean? That's what I'm yep. going to show you. There's there's no correction. There's right. no there's nobody who can say, whoa, 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 whoa. hey, let's, maybe you've thought about have you know this particular text of scripture and you know yeah. going from there a yeah lot, a lot of times you'll see the focus on again inclusivity inclusivity over truth exactly exactly you know. and we should we should if, if you yeah. correct them you might lose them right you know i you mean know, yeah one one of the things that we should do at some point in the future as far as this whole thing with the life of the local church is um we should we should talk through cuz one of the it, you know just kind of bouncing off of this topic is um in regard to materials that are really good uh, to study and to read concerning the local church, there's an excellent book out there that I would highly recommend. It's called uh, Nine Marks of a mm. Healthy Church by Mark Dever. It's been out for many years, um, and it's up on the shelf somewhere. Yeah, you know, and maybe up to – oh, yeah, well, I have some of those. Those are put out by Is Nine Marks, one? those colors, those colorful ones, yeah. No, the um, – those, yeah, those. I are feel like out. I've seen it in this office. It, it it is. It's it's. I think it's over there on that Somewhere. side. I'm pretty sure. But anyway. But yeah, yeah. Nine marks of a, of a of a of a healthy church. Um, and it goes through like w- what to look for in the life of the church, what a healthy church should be, the corporate entities of it, even some of the problems of of, yeah. a, of that that can potentially happen. Um, and um, and you know, and so I I and also what we're talking about here is you know the idea of official joining of a church in terms of membership and what that looks like because actually it's funny i was just talking with a young man the other day trying to get him to join the church he's been coming to our church for a long time and uh he was telling me just just in passing and i didn't really get into it with him too deep but he was telling me um that he uh that he doesn't he doesn't believe that church membership is biblical that it's not a biblical thing he was trying to argue with me a little bit he was joking i mean like he, good good kid okay he's a good kid he just he's just wrong and uh, you know what I mean, and uh, and and how oh well you don't see it in the text of scripture. Well, actually you do, and that would be an interesting thing. Uh, but nine marks of a healthy church, pick that one up if you're interested in the subject yeah. of of church membership. So interesting, yeah, interesting. Well, we could go back and forth yeah, all day, go all day long. Yeah. State of theology. You know, th- there were a couple of those that were kind of encouraging. They were, yeah. I wouldn't say that was all bad. No, uh, I was expecting wasn't, it wasn't all great. No, don't get me wrong, but. <laughs> um, but Overall, you know, I mean, it, it was expected. Absolutely, there was nothing really surprising there. Um, I guess, right? Well, yeah, ma- ma- I mean, maybe maybe the surprising part for me was how good some of the answers were. Sometimes I know, you know, I mean, like, but it's and and how some I mean, of them are maintained. Say it, but yeah, you, you get you get kind of as I'm know, hitting my yeah, microphone. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. I'm just talking with my hands. Yeah, uh, no. I don't know if this is true with you too, but uh, it's easy for for guys like us who are kind of we kind of, like i said we kind of have our eyes open as to what's going on around right. us and we can kind of get conditioned to almost get cynical about the culture around us oh the, yeah especially church culture too because church culture is is really just kind of yeah. spinning it, right now it's it spinning is. it doesn't it really is. 
just in general yeah um, there's again there's exceptions there's good there there's is lots of good stuff going on out there trust me yeah, absolutely um but there's also some really not so great stuff going out there too. There is, and and, and I think in general it's too, it's easy to get discouraged. It is, and I think I think a lot of that too is where we are at, uh, you know, geographically. I think a Maybe. lot of it is. Yeah. Um, we're in New England. We're in New for England. It's, it's, know, it's, yeah. it's 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 rough up Connecticut. here. Connecticut is a is a very very tough place to minister. Traditionally, it has been, and it and it's and it and it definitely is. And I think just our normal New England cynicism. That is part of our culture up here in general, but I mean, like, mm-hmm. but I think, I think also just the idea. I mean, like, but overarchingly, I mean, we bear in mind that God, um, God's going to sustain His church. God's going to grow His church, and He's going to do the right thing. And uh, yep. we have to keep our eyes on. Again, going back to that idea, we talked the very first one. Does God change? No, He doesn't. He doesn't change. He is immutable, and he is sovereign, and he is going to always do the right thing, and um, and we're encouraged with that. We just got to stay faithful. And, and at so, the end of the day, too, we really shouldn't be surprised because Jesus said this was going to happen. Amen. That, too. Yeah. He he said that there will be many out there who are misleading people, and, you know, this kind of stuff needs, it needs to happen. Absolutely. Um it's going to happen. Yep. Um, so we can get into some of that on uh, not plugging my sermon series, but we're going to get into some of that on uh, you know Revelation here pretty soon. Which uh, that's a nice yeah, segue. A ne- segue into yeah, <laughs> check out uh, the sermon series on Revelation. You know, that's uh, actually you week. know what yeah. that might be. Yeah, that might be the bow. <laughs> might be the bow right there. <laughs> check us out. Amen, brother. East, easterbaptist.com slash sermons. Amen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're in Revelation. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a good bow, I think, for that, or at least for the state of theology stuff. Amen. A um, couple plugs before we get out of here, though. Um, again, we're on YouTube. We're on Sermon Audio. Uh, check out our link tree. That's going to be in the description for both. Amen. Um, check us out on the socials. We're trying to uh, to update more on there. Uh, so check us out. Also, before we go, I wanted to announce yes. that, we, that we have, for those of you who are loyal listeners yes no Our loyal uh, listeners the loyal <laughs> listeners uh we have a gospelicious giveaway a gospelicious giveaway a i know from on giveaway. occasion we get to do this you know yeah. which is great we yeah. want we all, part of our our passion here is not only just to talk about jesus and to make sure that his name is known and to spread the gospelicious word people amen people 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 haven't said that in a while <laughs> Been, I know. I was. I was waiting for I it. Know. You know what I mean. I Beep know. Out. I know. We got to get back in the zone. You yeah. know what I mean. That's right, brother. Amen. I'm, it's starting to come back. It's got to come back. You know, I know. It's, it's slow but sure. It's been. A, it's been a little bit. You know what I mean. We'll years. do it. Amen. We'll get there. Gospelicious word. Beep hey, out. Pap- Beep out. Beep out. Amen. Uh, I feel like it's one of those things. Like you're like a like a rock star on a stage. Beep, Beep out. <laughs> Holding out the microphone. You know, <laughs> it's like, to the audience. Know, yeah, there you go. Amen. Um, anyway, yeah. I'm not a rock star, believe me. Uh, no, no. You, you kind of are. You kind of are. Oh, no, you thanks. kind of are. You're yeah. a rock star, brother. Give you me know that what I mean? That's right. Hair. Yeah. I know. Electric. I, was, I think when I first met you, I think you had the longer hair when I first met you. Oh, maybe I, I think no, you had like uh, may, maybe it was cut. Maybe it, I've I seen have, you with longer hair. Yeah, I have had yeah. it long since I've met you. Yes, yeah. I, I've grown I know it out a couple times. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway, anyway, yeah. You should have seen star hair. You should have seen it before I was married. Oh yeah, it was like down to my shoulders. Was it really? <laughs> we're talking that's, fresh maker three we're, we're gonna have to like do Sorry. some social that's stuff here like, yeah yeah fresh maker yes yeah. that's amazing Maybe we'll have to post on the socials yeah. about that we have to talk about that you know we'll have to yeah yeah might be a good uh, might be a good episode to talk about our filmmaking uh, oh, careers, <laughs> which which by the way we've joined together in recent years in ministry with that you know what i mean and we so have. it's we, we are, that's our yearly uh, vacation Bible school uh, yes. video. Good making. times, absolutely. But anyway, yeah. But back to the giveaway. Yes, we have, giveaway. We have a copy. Look at this. I'll put it right here. Look at that. Awesome. We have a copy um, of uh, Proverbs Daily Wisdom in ESV by Crossway. Awesome. Um, this copy of Proverbs is. I've looked through it. It's great. It's. Uh, it's it's kind of like a journaling opportunity too. Yeah. If you wanted to go through, there's like one or two proverbs per page in there, and uh, you can read through them slowly, understanding you know what each proverb is. Um, this is great uh, for anyone. This isn't just really for any age group. This yeah, is for absolutely. Any, anyone who wants to really focus and study in the proverbs. This is a great resource for you. Amen. Our gift to you. Uh, all you have to do uh, in order to enter the giveaway, uh, you need to subscribe. Yep. Subscribe to the uh, Gospelicious Radio YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like the video. Like a video. And leave a comment. 
telling us your favorite proverb and why. Hey, there you go. Hey, we'll yeah, also open this up. I'm going to announce this. We'll, we'll we'll announce this on our Gospelicious Facebook page yeah, as well. Yep. Uh, and whatever uh, whatever socials will do. We it. decide. Yeah. Uh, and if you leave a comment on there as well, that will enter you in there uh, awesome. for for this Proverbs book. Amen. Okay? And we'll again, we're going to run through. Uh, we'll in, in the description of this video, we'll describe the contest as well. Uh, and there might even be a surprise in there for you too. Yeah, My, I won't. I won't divulge right now what that is. But Amen. Well, uh, it'll be a nice little surprise for you. Amen. All right, so we'll do. We'll pick a random winner, maybe in a week or two. Yeah. And it's as easy as that. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, um, and uh, get yourself a copy of Proverbs. Get some daily wisdom in you. Daily you know what I mean? wisdom. That's right. Amen. All right. Yeah, that's a great. That's awesome. Yeah, I man. Like that. We wanna, I might have I, to enter that, you know. I, mean? I know, yeah, you know, like know. you say, yeah, you know. I mean, I know. Right now, it's like, you know, yeah, you know. I, uh, you know, we got, we got to get our, you know, get our those. We got to get our. That's right. Fans, you know, going yeah, a little yeah. bit more now. I know. Hopefully, it's you're more. Took a, more you know, we want you to be more fans of Jesus more than your fans. of Amen. Us, amen. But, uh, at the same time, we want to uh, we want to get you guys involved in this. We want to have Absolutely. a good time. We also. Also, we want to not only be entertaining and edifying, we also want to be able to equip. Amen. Yeah. To so do the, what three, we can the, too. the three E's, right? Amen. Amen. Entertain, edify, equip. equip. That's right. That's a good. That's a good mission statement. I know we haven't talked about mission huh? statement, but I just thought of know, that. That's a that's a great one. You it's know what I mean? Good, but, right? Well, you're the writer, Hold brother. On, write that right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let me write that down. And go back. Yeah. But we want to equip you guys with resources. Amen. That's great. And so whenever we can get our hands on resources for you, we want to be able to give them away. Amen. And uh, help you guys out. So. Proverbs, Daily Wisdom, enter the contest today, uh, and we look forward to giving that away to somebody in the very near future. Uh, check us out, YouTube, Sermon Audio, semi-exclusive home of Gospelicious Radio. Amen, amen. I say semi-exclusive only because YouTube as well, but, yeah, but we want we want to stay on YouTube, but yeah, YouTube's uh, great. Sermon Audio is the semi-exclusive home of Gospelicious Radio. Check us out on all the socials. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're uh, looking into doing looking into other sh- stuff, yeah, too. other stuff in the future. We'll, we'll, we'll keep see. you guys yeah, updated on that. Right. But again, check out our link tree. Yep. Uh, our link tree will be in the description. A link to that. You can check us all out on all that stuff there. Right. Uh, that is all I have for today. Do you have anything else you want to add before hey, man, we go? No. Uh, you know, like you say, keep a uh, keep an eye out. Um, not sure. I know I had mentioned uh, last time about doing another uh, Tim's Theology Thursday at some point. Um, I'm going to get into it. Don't worry. I'm not sure when. Yep. But uh, you once that we're happens, just we'll, to this yeah, again. we're getting into the shifting gears into it, and yep. um, and so uh, looking forward to that, and um, yeah, that's that's uh, that's a, that's about it. I think that's all right. Yeah, well, you know? you know what, guys, I think it's time to say goodbye. So oh, I know, oh, oh single tear, single, single tear. tear down. Oh, I know, Pastor Tim. Yeah, it was great to do this with you. Amen. Same here, brother. We'll Absolutely. see you again next week with Absolutely. some more gospelicious this, goodness. That's right. <laughs> Spread the gospelicious word. <laughs> People. People. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, brother. Right. Amen. So, All Pastor right, Tim Howard. Yeah, amen. Heavy painting and God bless, my friends. I'm Adam Miner. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. <laughs> Bye, guys. See you. Bye. Now. Bye. Amen. Amen.